were talking about the etiquette in the world of classical music, right? And showing up, you know, in certain attire of classical music concerts. What if, what about other concerts, right? Um, I know I mentioned metal shows before, you know, there is kind of an etiquette on how you're supposed to dress the metal shows. I mean, you don't show up in like, you know, your wedding dress to a metal show. <laughs> you, I mean, usually wear black, right? You don't have to. A lot of people wear their favorite band shirts or some kind of merch, right? Um, it's not really spoken, you know, you don't really, it's not really established that that's how you dress, but that's how people show up, right? I mean, like, for example, um, I don't know, I'm just name dropping right here. What if you go to a Taylor Swift concert? Are you gonna, are you gonna dress the same way? I mean, like, you know, I guess it's just like every place or institution, you know, or artist might have like their norm, right? I mean, I don't know how, what you guys think about that. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think it's just that, you know, just again, going back to classical music, we're constantly complaining about not enough people appreciating it, that it is a dying genre, that it is a dying art form. For me, it'll never die out. Otherwise, these conservatories would never be in business, right? You're trading gazillions of musicians around the world and students around the world who are spending so much money to get a degree in, in classical music. So the, I, I think the, the question is like, well, what are we, you know, I mean, now we're, we're kind of going off a little off track about, I think it, it, it is a longer discussion, right? As, as classical musicians and as a, as a, as a bubble of a, of a little ecosystem, what are we doing that is not benefiting us? And a lot of times we look at ourselves and, and we're constantly complaining that others are not understanding us. And I think what I want to encourage is, especially as you guys are finishing or finished out of the conservatory as musicians, whether you continue to pursue that career on stage or off stage, it's thinking about, well, what can we do to, like you said, Zan, like to make ourselves more accessible to people rather than saying they're not understanding us, right? Because if you look at other art forms, like other genres of music, whether it's jazz, jazz don't care what people think about themselves. They just do it. And we're doing it to please the audience. But classical music is always the other way around, right? You should not clap. Whereas like jazz at Lincoln Center, when they came here to Saudi, they're like, clap whenever you feel like it. We don't care. See, like they're already inviting you to come to us. Whereas classical musicians are like, well, you got to follow our rules then if you're going to follow my rules, I'm here to have a good time, not to follow rules, you know? Yeah, and I think like this, like, I guess, as Dan said, gatekeepiness is sort of like, you know, keeping the classical community from like growing in the way that I think it could, because like people are so like put off by certain things that we do. I think there is like a stereotypical impression on classical music. I was talking to my friend and was I was explaining to him like how the repertoire works and he was oh my god this is so fancy I was like this is not fancy this is just classical music someone needs to take the lead right like someone yeah. should be like clapping between every single movie yeah. what you're reading on the note is what is written by Mozart by Beethoven by Scriabin there's no recorder voice saying that this is how it should be done do you actually think Mozart is playing all of these movements the same way every single time he plays so what is it to say that you guys can, you guys cannot, cannot, you know, switch it up a little bit? Like no one, no one has thought of it and no one is trying to do it because they say this is the way it has to be done. I'm asking the question that my husband asks me all the time, right? I always use him as an example. He, people know like throughout my shows, I use him as an example because I live with him and he's an engineer and he thinks exactly like an engineer. And he's like, well, why can't you do it this way? I was like, because you can't, but why? Where's the rule that says it can't? And it's true, there's no rule. Is there a written rule? Like we made it up as an audience, as an, as, as an ecosystem. Going to Costco Music concert, the audience are receiving. They're like, yes. they're shush, like yeah. you can talk. You can't like take photos or like you can't sing with it obviously. So it's like the musicians are up there like giving music and then like the audience cannot do anything about it except clapping like my hot take is drop the attitude that's my yeah. hot take on classical music in 2024 like do whatever you want that's a well, good I one. think casual concerts are key you know yeah uh, meaning have a more friendly environment in the concerts where you talk with the audience and explain you know mm -hmm. what you're playing or what you're singing like i was just having a performance in the kashushka foundation in new york 
uh, last week with a vocalist friend of mine and you know before every piece or before every set of pieces we talk with the audience and explain what this is how this relates to the theme of our recital and you know with a, in a very friendly manner joking and stuff like that and audience engagement as well and people mm -hmm. loved it the audiences want to feel involved because you tell them like basically sit down shut up and listen you know like it is in a lot of classical music concerts then you know then there's like a are, disconnect I, there yeah yeah exactly so as performers right i think we just need to adapt in menace right when when we were there um, I don't know if you guys experienced this. I know Annie, you probably did because we were there at mm. very much at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but I remember before, uh, at, in some year, the head of the piano department told all of us, it's like, you know, guys, you have to say something uh, before every single work. And a lot of my friends were like, oh my God, I have to talk? Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they would go up there and they, and then like one of my friends, like I'm not gonna say who, but they came out like with, index cards in their hand. <laughs> They're like, um, I'm going to be playing this piece by this composer. And this piece is very special to me because, and then everyone in the audience was like trying, you know, to keep it together. They're close friends, you know, but it was just really funny. <laughs> but I do have to say, I feel like for me, like the talking is more nerve wracking than the actual play. I don't know why. Oh, for me, like, I enjoy yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But maybe the problem is really these institutions, these educational institutions that are failing the students. That they are not. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to. I will apologize to all the all the conservatories right now. I'm not naming any names. I'm not pointing anybody out. Conservatories and educational institutions are not updating their realities as to what happens after these students get out of school. You know what? How people engage in classical music and how people engage with performers on stage is no longer the same as it was. 20, 30, 50 years ago. And even just the idea of clapping, right? Like if you're still taught that clapping is not okay, it just means that that institution is also not updating their realities. Yeah, I think it's, as you said, it's some sort of bubble. It's actually really surprising. Like we're all getting trained to be like performers, to like, you know, entertain people, play music for them on stage. But like, we're still not used to like talking to our mm -hmm. audience. Or like yeah. some people are even like perhaps opposed to it or don't want to do it, but like you've got to do it at some point. I yeah. mean, I never thought of that. You know, I think it's absolutely crazy now that we're talking about this. Like mm -hmm. actually, because um, I and I remember when I went to high school in freshman year of high school, a mandatory required class for every single freshman was public speaking, and you had to yeah. get up there in front of the whole class. And every other week, at least, because you know we had a, quite a number of people in class, every other week you had to talk. But it was just so that you get comfortable with and get accustomed to proper habits when speaking in public, right? I feel like as performers, I think we should all be, you know, we have to, we should have to learn that. Like the bubble is created; it has to be created by somebody. And I just wanted to, you know, throw it out there as we close: is that, you know, you have to change in order to move forward, right? And to all of the musicians, especially. The, the the next generation that's that's going to the conservatories like what are you doing about some of these fixed quote unquote very stagnant and and fixated rules rules that a lot of people just don't understand and you, and you don't even know how to explain to them why these rules exist so that's my final thought but um but i think this was a very very fun conversation i'm glad we were able to come back uh to this um you know come back to our offerings with this this topic and you know we will have more in the coming weeks so thank you everyone thank you to my team and then we will see you on our next uh next video bye bye, bye.